2014, the year of delays and broken releases. It is true that we haven't seen many good games in this year, but I have played enough good ones to be able to create this shitty list that nobody cares about. Please keep in mind that this list is my own and completely useless in every possible way unless you are genuinely interested in my opinion. If you are looking for a top 5 list based on sales, gameplay quality or something else, you won't find that here. These are games I enjoyed most in this year, listed from least best to best best. This casual village building strategy game made by one human being is by far the best strategy I have played this year. It is simple, to some maybe a bit too simple, but to me it was perfect in its ability to make you feel the village you were creating. Starting from a few families and nothing but a carriage full of resources, you needed to build shelter, create some sort of economy and reproduce to the point where the entire village would feel like a self-sufficient society, purely from your creation. Perhaps you could argue that the game has a point where you can no longer advance your technology, you are kind of stuck with the same houses, same hospitals and markets, but it will take you a better part of a day to reach that point. In game hours, that is. Besides, once you reach that point, the game becomes an economy management game, where you truly feel the previously mentioned self-sufficiency of your little village, which might as well be a town by then. It is a beautiful game that I recommend playing on a rainy day during the winter. Or, you know, whenever you can. The Talos Principle is the best puzzle game ever since Portal 2 came out. This sentence is mentioned in every review for this game, and rightfully so. This game has a ton of puzzles that are very interesting and reasonably difficult, and a story that makes you think about our existence. It is true that you might roll your eyes at the way the story is presented, but the gameplay is truly worthy of anyone who has ever played Portal and liked it. There is not much else to say about this game. It is very good, makes you think, and makes you want to solve more puzzles. Once you solve a puzzle you feel good, which should mean that it has done its job, shouldn't it? Sometimes it makes me nauseous though, and that sucks. Or maybe my brain is telling me I'm too dumb for this game, I'm not sure. If you're one of my regular watchers, you could probably assume this game would make the list. The Long Dark is perhaps the black sheep of this list, especially because it's nowhere near being finished. The story mode doesn't exist yet, and the sandbox mode is being changed every week. This doesn't change the fact I spent 60 hours playing the game in its first month. I don't think any other game is able to present Wilderness Survival as good as this one. Even in its earliest stages, the bugs were minimal and the gameplay was enjoyable. The art and the ambience of the earlier release completely blew me away. I also hope I meet the Hinterland team behind the game one day, since I have exchanged quite a few messages with several of their key members, who have all been very awesome. This is one of the contenders for the 2015 Game of the Year, if the story delivers. This war of mine is based off of the Bosnian War during the time I was born. I have several family members who were participating in that war, including my dad. This game is by far the best, least enjoyable game you will play. The way it is presenting the civilians during the war makes you feel bad, but you want to play because you want to save them. You have to save them. You will be making difficult decisions and you will probably hate yourself, but you will continue playing until you survive the war. The art style and the soundtrack just enhance the terribleness of war, and it is definitely a game you will not easily forget. And here it is, my game of the year. Shadow of Mordor is fantastic and everyone should play it. While the story of the game is a little bit sucky, everything else is awesome. The combat and the orc nemesis system especially. The orc hierarchy is very interesting and fun to play around with. Warchiefs have their orc bodyguards who also have other orcs under them. Once you learn enough abilities, you can turn the bodyguards on your side, kill other orcs with them, and in the end make them betray their warchiefs. It works flawlessly and if an orc kills you, once you meet him again, he will wonder how are you alive. Vice versa works as well, you might chop an orc's head clean off, and he might return at some point of the game to battle you again. The other abilities and side quests make the game full of interesting content that will keep you busy for hours. Buy this game and play it. The DLC is awesome as well. Buy that too. There it is. I hope you like my shitty list. That means we have similar taste and that is good. Or bad. Make sure to check out my other top 5 lists. At this moment I have just one video beside this one, but I do plan to make more. In case you are watching this when I already created more lists, then you will probably notice it on the screen, in the playlist or somewhere else unless you're blind, then I assume you're using some sort of program to tell you things. 
Anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you in 2015.